Hi, I'm Amanda Crook of Locust Light Farm. I'm an herbalist and a writer, and today I'm going to read you a story. I'm going to read you the first two chapters of The Forest Story. The Forest Story is a choose-your-own-path adventure that's delivered via email. So it's a story that you're receiving in your inbox, and sometimes you get to choose the way you direct your path. Sometimes at the end of a chapter, you have a choice to make, and the choice you make determines the next chapters you'll receive. So it's like a throwback to those great books in the 90s, except this story is forest themed. In this story, you get to explore the forest with gnomes or with fairies, and you get to learn about forest ecosystems. You're exploring mycorrhizal networks, you're exploring fermentation, you're exploring ethical harvesting and larval host plants, all while apprenticing to a magical old woman of the woods. Let's begin. Chapter one. One day you're walking in the woods. It's a rare day that you have all to yourself and you've decided to spend it in your favorite spot in the forest. You're meandering slowly, snooping at plants and looking for mushrooms, imagining gnomes scurrying about the mossy tree roots, feeling more entranced and relaxed as the minutes hours pass by. At some point, a cool breeze drifts in and a misty fog follows. You enjoy the coolness, the drama of the mist, and the beauty of the fog. You keep wandering until, at some point, you realize that you don't know where you are anymore. How could this happen? You come here all the time. Well, no need to panic. You take a deep breath and keep walking. You move with more awareness now, trying to orient yourself. You grow more concerned as the mist turns to rain, trying unsuccessfully to turn your phone back on. When did it die? Why didn't you bring that solar charger thing your mother gave you? Eventually, the forest opens into a clearing and you see a cabin, smoke puffing from the chimney. A cabin, smoke, a person must be there, but also a cabin? Here, where are you anyway? You walk carefully up to the cabin, not wanting to intrude. The door is slightly ajar, so you knock on the frame, but no one answers. It smells so good inside. As you are now quite wet, the rain is trickling down your back and starting to make you cold. You decide to be bold and slip inside. The cabin is one room with a loft above. Much of the room is occupied by a rough hewn wooden table scattered with bowls and a vase of untended flowers. The back wall is filled with shelves and the shelves are filled with jugs, jars, and decanters of every shape and size, glass, ceramic, wooden, even antique bits of porcelain here and there. Through the hazy light, which you've just noticed is coming from three kerosene lamps placed around the room, you can see some bits floating in a few of the jars. You've got some guesses as to what they might be. You turn your attention to a big bellied wood stove that's warming your back, drying your face, and tingling your nose with what must be some sort of simmering chai. Nutmeg is your favorite, and it makes you feel welcome, even though you have clearly invaded someone's home. Just as you're contemplating sneaking over to the stove to lift the lid on the chai pot for a deep inhale, you feel a cool draft as the door opens. An older woman enters, bundled in layers against the rain. She's carrying a wide basket filled with muddy roots. She looks up at you as she navigates the basket through the door, with a matter of fact, if not quite warm, glance. Ah, welcome. I'm glad you've made it. Would you like to stay for tea? That's your first option. Would you like to stay for tea? Would you decide to trust this woman? Or would you decide to go home? If you were to decide to stay for tea, this is your next chapter. Chapter two. Um, yes, you stammer, surprised. You're not sure what's going on, but you never turn down tea. It smells amazing and you're chilly. Also, that would be rude. And since you already invaded this woman's cabin, you don't want to add to your transgressions. Well then, the woman says, who looks already unimpressed with you. Take off your wet things and sit down. You busy yourself with unwinding your scarf and unlacing your hiking boots. Slowly, you've decided you don't want to look unbusy. While the woman unwraps her shawls, shakes off her hat, sets the basket on the table and grabs two stout mugs from the shelf. The mugs are gnarled, handmade crockery, exactly the type you love. 
and you drift into wondering which one you like more, which one you secretly hope she gives you, when she clears her throat and asks if you take cream. Um, yes, you stammer, feeling caught in your act of mug lust. Her glance says, is that all you know how to say? So you follow with, those mugs are beautiful. She sets them down on the table, spicy steam twirling in the light from the lamp, and brings over a small pitcher of cream, more crockery, and a honey jar. You're getting the sense that this woman is losing patience with your temerity, so you help yourself to the cream and honey without asking, and settle into the first precious sip. Ah, you don't even care if it's bewitched. The chai is delicious, entrancing, sumptuous. The tension you are holding melts completely, and you exhale. At the second sip, you raise your eyes and look directly at the woman for the first time. She meets your gaze. My name is Atropa, she says, and I've been waiting for you. Your body stills for a few moments. What? How do you know I'm the one you've been waiting for, you ask? Because the forest brought you, she answered. And without giving you time to ask another question, continues, I'll need to see you once a week. I'm guessing this time works for you? Um, I guess so, you mumble as you mentally rearrange your laundry schedule, weekly vacuuming, YA book club reading, and all the other things you do in your day off. You get the sense that Etropa doesn't care about your packed schedule. Perfect, she says. How much do you know about plants? Some, you say with a semi-confident upswing. And mushrooms? Some? Less confidence here. Well, let's get started. Atropa stands and finds a basket, which she hands to you. Inside, you see a small knife and some sort of narrow digging tool. She wraps a layer around her shoulders, grabs her own basket, and beckons you out the door. The mist has cleared, but it's still pleasantly cool inside. You walk through the clearing to the edge of the forest on the other side of the cabin, where you see a small foot trail leading into the dim loneliness. Atropa leads you along the trail, and as you walk, your mind is finally able to settle into what's happening. You wandered into this woman's house in who knows where in the forest. She has taken you into some sort of training, working, apprenticeship situation. You have to find a new data vacuum and you're now following her deeper into the woods. Okay, you've got this. You can be here for this. You inhale the sweet forest fragrance and your mind starts to trickle with excitement. Where are you going? Well, eyes ahead. Just as a smile begins to stretch in, Atropa leaves the path and finds her way to a broken stump of a tree, about chest high. You follow her to stand beside the stump. Her eyes are resting on a rusty colored shelf mushroom emerging from the stump. Do you know who this is? She asks. Is that Reishi? Yes, it is. You want to play cool, but you smile anyway. You've passed your first test with mysterious forest woman and you're pleased with yourself. This Reishi has offered to introduce you to the forest whenever you arrived. It's been waiting here for a few weeks now. Would you like to harvest it? Yeah, you say, somewhat awed. First, introduce yourself, then offer a gesture of gratitude. Then you can slice right here. You do as she says, harvest the reishi, thank it again, and place it in your basket. You expect to turn around, but Atropa nods and continues off the path down a slight hill. You notice the air feels a bit more damp. The soil softens beneath your feet. The tree cover thickens. Atropa stops and squats down. This time, she's looking at a plant you've never seen before. Two branches extend from a thin stem like outstretched arms. There's a small button of a flower at the crook of the branches, and a compound leaf spreads out from each like an open palm. It's only about eight inches tall, but you can feel the aura extending around it. You don't know who this plant is, but it's cute, adorable even, and also extremely dignified. You like it at once. Do you know who this is? Atropa says. No, you say, curiosity eclipsing your ego this time. This is American ginseng, she says, gesturing with reverence. Wow, you exhale. You're starstruck. Ginseng, of course. Who else would have an aura like that? And here? Now you're really wondering where you are. You didn't expect to meet ginseng anytime within the next decade. Not here not so close to home, not without traveling hours to some sort of sanctuary or garden. And here she is. Would you like to harvest her? Um, 
No, you would not like to harvest her. Is Atropa crazy? If she brought you here to join in some sort of poaching scheme, then you're out of here and we'll definitely be reporting her. Thank you very much. It's okay, says Atropa gently. She also offered to introduce you to the forest. There are others nearby, as you can see. It's her decision. You look around and now that you recognize them, see that the space around you is filled with other ginseng plants, some smaller, some with more leaves, some in clusters, some standing alone. You look back at Atropa. Yes, it's amazing, she says. No one else knows they're here and no one else will. She finishes with extra eye contact. Understood, you think, and turn to the plant. You do as before, introducing yourself, offering your gratitude, this time adding in a prayer for the well-being of the plant community. Turns out the narrow digging tool is perfect for digging up this root, which still feels blasphemous despite the prayer and Atropa's reassurance. You gently shake the soil from the roots and place the plant beside the reishi in your basket. Beautiful, says Atropa, who stands and begins walking back to the path. You follow, only slightly distracted by spotting all the ginsengs on the way. As you return to the top of the hill, they thin out until, at the peak, there are none. You and Atropa walk back to the cabin, into the spicy coziness, and set the baskets down on the table. She unwinds a layer and puts a pot of water on the stove. You remove the reishi and ginseng from the basket. You use a knife to separate the ginseng roots from the aerial parts. You look around and Atropa hands you a bowl of water to rinse the roots in. You shake them off and lay them on the table beside the reishi. So, says Atropa coming to stand beside you, these are two sovereigns of the forest. They have each offered to be the one who introduces you to it, but only one will be the first. Your first introduction will shape the way you see the forest for the rest of your time here. You look at her, then at the table, then back at her. Who would you like to introduce you to the forest? Your eyes fall upon the reishi, then the ginseng, then back to the reishi. You reach your hand out and pick up. Which would you choose, the reishi or the ginseng? If you would like to make your choice and read the rest of the story, you can learn more at locustlightfarm.com dash da the dash forest dash story. I hope you enjoyed this story and I'll see you in the forest.